Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us today as we discuss the impact that hybrid data is having on the digital enterprise. My name is John Bard. I'm responsible for product marketing at Actian, where we innovate best fit solutions for data management, data integration, and data analytics. I'm here today to introduce Matt Athlet, Research Director for Data Platforms and Analytics at 451 Research, to provide his expert perspective on the inevitability of hybrid data and how you can take advantage of it to improve insights into your business, your markets, and your customers to grow revenue and increase profits. Matt? Uh, thanks, John, and thank you, everyone, for joining us uh, on, on this webinar. So I'm Matt Asler, uh, as John said, Research Director for Data Platforms and Analytics at 451 Research. Uh, just to briefly give you an introduction to the company in case anybody's not come across 451 Research before. So we're an IT research and advisory company. Uh, we have uh, several hundred employees, over, over 2,000 clients, which is predominantly te technology and service providers, but also corporate advisory, finance, professional services, and IT decision makers. 70,000 plus IT professionals, business users, and consumers in our 451 Alliance research community. So these are people that are not necessarily direct clients of 451 Research, but many of them work for companies that, that are, but they are practitioners, people out there in the field working with technology um, as part of their you know, daily work lives and also home lives, and those two increasingly overlapping, but they're you know, people who are engaged in, with, with technology and increasingly help shape our perspective on the market by taking part in surveys and interviews. As a thanks for doing so, receive access to our research. So an increasingly important part of the business, and you'll see some of the data from that group as we go through the slides here. So onto the topic itself, and we're talking obviously about you know, the inevitability of, of hybrid data. And, and hybrid you know, is, you know, obviously uh, it's not, not a new term, but it's a term we see being used increasingly um, over the last few years obviously in relation to things like hybrid vehicles, and, but also in terms of things like hybrid cloud, hybrid computing, uh, and of course hybrid data. And when we think about what we mean by hybrid data, I think there, to some extent perhaps the, the area we've seen most focus on that to date is in the field of hybrid databases, and certainly we'll touch on that. But we see a much broader kind of drive towards uh, sort of hybrid data management, a hybrid approaches to analytics, and we'll, we'll touch on those as well as, as we go through here. So if you think about, you know, for starting off from a hybrid database perspective, um, you know, we think about database requirements, and, and traditionally those have largely fallen into two camps, transactional workloads and analytic workloads. And what we've seen in the database space you know, over recent years is, is this kind of explosion in terms of specialist requirements uh, for, for the different, uh, different application workloads and therefore the databases to support them. So just to pick a, a few off this list, things like uh, a, you know, a highly distributed data processing, real-time data processing, uh, obviously eventual consistency, the, a greater interactivity uh, related perhaps to, you know, to, to social data um, or more, you know, more frequent real-time uh, updates. And, and as you see here, you know, right in the middle of this, we're talking about hybrid uh, data processing requirements. And, and this really comes down to sort of, uh, if you think again about sort of, sort of the tr traditional approach to data, uh, database management, that uh, has been about transactional and analytic workloads. And even if you were using the same database to, to support both those application workloads, which, which many organizations you know, over the years have done, those, that, that database would be tuned differently to support the unique requirements of, of obviously transactional uh, OLTP systems of record and you know analytic uh, OLAP systems of analytics and you know our old friend ETL processing in the middle there to move data and transform data from the transactional database into the analytic database to make it available you know for, for the analysts for, for data process uh, for, sorry for, for you know processing and analytics. What we're seeing increasingly is a requirement um, or the development of applications that have a requirement for more hybrid operational and analytic processing. And we talk about this at 451 Research in terms of systems of engagement and intelligence, and, and we'll provide some examples of, of what we mean by that. But really what we're talking about here is uh, databases that are capable of supporting not just transactional workloads and analytic workloads when tuned different, you know, differently to support those workloads, but actually 
within the same database, both transactional and, anal and analytic uh, workloads being served from the same database from the same data set. And some examples of what we mean by this, you know, to think we've been talking about workloads, what, have been, what kind of workloads are we talking about? So if we think about, you know, on the, uh, the left-hand side of the screen here, the OLTP, traditional systems of record, tra transactional applications, things like ERP, CRM, SEM, et cetera, where you're processing operational data, you know, that's your, your traditional uh, transactional environment. On, on the right-hand side, you've got your traditional analytics kind of environments. We're talking about systems of analysis, uh, data warehousing, data marts, BI reporting, data science, where you're predominantly analyzing historical data. But if we think about the sort of the hybrid or combined operational and analytic processing workloads, it, it isn't a matter of having one database to do both the, tra you know, the traditional, transactional, and the, and the analytics. It's about a new kind of application, new kinds of workloads where you're, as we said, we talk about systems of engagement, developing emerging enterprise operational applications that actually provide real-time interactivity to the end user based on the analysis of that operational data. So delivering things like recommendations and personalized content, personalized offers, and, and another prime use case we see is real-time fraud analysis. So again, I think the key point here, it isn't a matter of doing everything you've always done before just with one database. It's about these new applications that have this, this hybrid requirement for both operational and analytic processing you know, in the same database to serve that application. When we talk about hybrid data, we're not just talking about the database, but you know, that's one of the key areas we see that, that's very interesting in terms of you know, the evolution of technologies in this space. But there's also a broader hybrid data management uh, uh, and analytics uh, requirement here as well. And, and so another way of thinking about this and, and to sort of illustrate this, uh, you can hopefully see on the slide here, you know, this is another representation perhaps of what we saw, saw before. So you've got your enterprise applications, the data is made available in the data warehouse from that, obviously, as we said, through an ETL process. And then traditionally, we've seen IT professionals developing uh, analytic applications for uh, decision makers and data analysts, so creating you know reports and, uh, and and ad hoc queries. What we've seen is really an explosion of requirements um, and use cases on multiple levels. So in terms of both the number of data sources and also the ways that the, the technologies used to actually store and process that data, and also in terms of you know the the different roles of users that are coming to that data. So in terms of sort of, you know, on, the, on the, the data sources side, it's not just enterprise applications. It's also things like log and clickstream data, data from mobile applications, from bots and social media. And, and obviously one area in particular we're seeing, you know, we're, we're just at the, uh, the, the start of this in terms of the, the, the changes that we anticipate seeing is obviously IoT devices and sensors. So a lot of companies investing in uh, enabling IoT devices and sensors as a new source of data. And we're talking here about the potential for massive data volumes, obviously come with um, real-time data processing requirements in order to, to, to deliver um, responses to that data as it is generated. And also one of the key things that's changing here as well is that, you know, we think about data processing always, you know, traditionally within on a, a traditional data center, on-premises data center, increasingly obviously done in the cloud, but in particular in relation to IoT devices and centers, because of the latency requirements, um, a, a lot of focus on uh, edge processing uh, and edge analytics as well. As I say, actually, in addition to the, the latency requirements there, also that volume of data that's being produced, so filtering that to bring it down to a more manageable level. And there, there may, then there may be some more processing done either on a, in a data, uh, data center or, or, or the cloud um, you know, at a later date. Within the topic, you know, we're focusing on the, the different data storage and processing uh, capabilities. You know, as we said, traditionally, it's all, we're all been about the data warehouse. You know, these days it's also about obviously Hadoop and cloud storage, but also not just the storage of that data, but the, the, the approaches to analyzing that data and seeing an increasing focus uh, also on machine learning and particular things like natural language processing, um, enabling organizations to make more of the data that they have um, and to real sort of you know, harness that, that potential of all that data that, that's being generated. And as I said, 
you know, in terms of sort of the delivery of, of what we talk about, you know, systems of engagement, systems of intelligence, provide real-time intelligence, um, automated intelligence based on the processing of that data, potentially to, to unlock, uh, you know, new opportunities for developing new applications, engaging with customers and partners and, uh, in, you know, in different ways. We've also got here, you know, Spark, uh, obviously, as, as another data processing platform separately from, from uh, you know, machine learning. But obviously, those two go together very nicely, and we see a lot of organizations looking at and adopting, indeed, you know, Spark as the platform for doing machine, you know, real-time, high-performance, in-memory machine learning uh, development and, and processing. In terms of, sort of the, the, the expansion of the different roles uh, of people that are analyzing data. So I said before, it was predominantly historically about IT professionals you know, creating reports for decision makers and data analysts. Obviously, now we see more self-service uh, analysis uh, via, you know, for data analysts, but also potentially business users and data scientists. And so organizations are increasingly having to deliver a combination of, of analytics techniques to a variety of business of users within the organization. So it's not just about traditional reporting, and it's not just about advanced analytics and predictive analytics for your you know your data scientists. It's that combination of capabilities delivered uh, across the organization. I mean, SQL uh, you know continues to uh, dominate in terms of uh, you know query techniques, but increasingly we see organizations looking at um, you know more flexible. Uh, or perhaps you know my agile uh, NoSQL techniques as well, and graph processing and graph analytics is in particular uh, an, uh, an area of, of, of significant growth. Also, uh, you know we're not just talking about clearly business intelligence and analytics tools being used by these individuals. Um, increasingly, we see um, embedded analytics delivering some of the, that intelligence we talked about into the enterprise applications. And so we talk about this in terms of pervasive intelligence. And you think about as you engage with applications as a consumer, increasingly you're actually engaging with the results of an analytic process, even if you, you, know, you may be totally unaware of that process, but the recommendations and the, you know, the content that's being delivered is being driven by a real-time analytic process based on you know, your history of engagement with that, that organization and, and with that application. And then, you know, another key point here, obviously, we talked about cloud storage increasingly important in terms of uh, you know, data storage and processing. What is increasingly true, uh, we talk about this from a hybrid uh, data processing uh, standpoint, is it's not a matter of choosing to do your processing you know, on-premises or in the cloud. We talk about the inevitability of hybrid, and that certainly seems to be the case, you know, in in the when it comes to the cloud. And so, based on that, we're seeing an increased focus, and we're going to be looking at this in a lot more detail this year, especially within 451 research around multi-location data management. How do you manage data that's spread out across multiple clouds, in, uh, in addition to your existing data centers, and in potentially multiple? Uh, you know, data storage technologies and data processing technologies across those different environments. One of the, the things we see organizations are being increasingly concerned about is, um, and this has been true on premises, but it's, you know, equally true on, on the cloud, is how do you avoid getting locked into a particular uh, technology and obviously a particular service provider? Just to, to put some, some sort of illustration on that, I mean, so this is data from that uh, 451 Alliance um, group I talked about earlier, uh, and this kind of illustrates the, the growth of, of hybrid cloud as a, as a strategy, as opposed to multiple clouds, uh, something that organizations have, have, you could perhaps say, sort of uh, fallen into. And so we see, you know, organizations, the, the use of, of uh, you know, traditional non-cloud environments is falling. We see growth uh, across in multiple areas in terms of private cloud and, uh, and also infrastructure as a service, software as a service, and, and based on what we see from uh, you know, the, the users that we speak to actually added hybrid cloud you know, to this mix uh, a couple of years ago, and as I said, with a view of it, it actually being a strategic choice rather than something that, that, uh, that organizations kind of accidentally end up doing. Um, and there is a, a distinct difference between you know, running multiple clouds and actually having a, a deliberate hybrid cloud strategy. So one of the things that, that is 
complicated, therefore, for enterprises as they look at this space is how do you decide where specific workloads should be run? I mean, clearly, there we talk about uh, having a best execution venue, and and you know it is true that there 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 is uh, a best environment for any the individual workload. And what is difficult is trying to work out you know what that is. There is ways of doing that, and actually here you know as with most things you know data is your friend. And actually there are data driven ways of trying to figure out where workloads should best be deployed, in terms of things like analyzing cost, trying to decipher, you know, through the complexity of different cost offerings within the cloud. Um, obviously, performance is, is a, a key metric for a lot of organizations, in particular sort of latency, um, and that, you know, becomes in, uh, relevant uh, when, when you're talking about moving workloads from a, an on-premises environment perhaps to the cloud. And also risk, and in terms of sort of putting a number on it, particularly in terms of things like liability. You know, security is always a concern, is always a, a, a lens that organizations view uh, different and new suppliers from, but in particular in relation to liability, they're used to dealing with large enterprise, large vendors, sorry, that um, you know have rules in place in terms of what happens if things go wrong, and 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 obviously everybody is looking for the same kind of responsiveness now from their cloud provider as well. So just to, to, to sort of uh, wrap up here, I mean, what is this all about? I mean, it talks about, you know, sort of the, the reasons and the drivers behind sort of hybrid databases and hybrid data management. Really what we're talking about here is, is enabling transformational change. Um, you know, we see that a lot of organizations are looking to become more data-driven, to become more sort of digitally, uh, digitally focused. And what we, if we talk about this in terms of, of the concept of digital transformation, we see that companies are trying to do a couple of things, transform how they serve customers and uh, employees and partners to support continuous improvement of business operations, to disrupt existing business and markets, obviously particularly their, their, their existing competitors. And then you know the ultimate goal, and, and this is what we see a lot of com companies talking about, but perhaps few are actually doing at this point, is actually about inventing new businesses and new business models, and, and doing so driven by, by data and understanding how, um, you know, a better understanding of how they can respond to, to customers and partners, et cetera. So what needs to be transformed within a business to deliver on that? So there's, there, you know, there's a number of things here. Obviously, we see a lot of companies focusing on the platform aspects of this, and obviously platform transformation, the move to the cloud, IT becoming more of a software and enabler and less of a sort of a cost center um, is, is a key part of this. But also, you know, it's not just about technology. It's also about business processes and, and also culture. Uh, and we see companies trying to focus more on collaboration, both internally and also out to their, you know, to their, to their customers and partners and suppliers as well. And then, you know, information transformation. As we said, you know, data is a key element of uh, transformational change, and uh, therefore we see organisations looking to gather more and more data from more and more so sources and process as much of it as they possibly can in order to uh, come up with uh, you know, new solutions, new ways of approaching the market, and, and hopefully gain some of that transformational edge uh, that, that we talked about on the previous slide. So just to, uh, to sum up here, I mean, we've run through a, a, a fair amount there in terms of, sort of some of the, the, the key high-level uh, changes that we see in terms of sort of the uh, the adoption of hybrid data and hybrid data management and some of the um, aspects that, that that go along with that in terms of sort of cloud and transformational change. I mean, as we said, IT transformation can't be necessarily neatly isolated or, or bifurcated into two speeds. One of the things we see is a lot of companies being uh, thinking that they can sort of separate their sort of new projects from their old projects and, and separate actually the delivery of those within their organization. What we see is if companies are going to truly transform, that doesn't necessarily actually you know, deliver on the goods. Um, transitioning to sort of next generation technologies um, has to be done in terms of actually embracing, being embraced by the entire business uh, in all its forms, but also in terms of actually integrating with the existing technologies and applications that you already have. As we said, you know, hybrid and particularly what we talk about, sort of hybrid or combined operational analytic database workloads 
are set to grow significantly for new database deployments um, driven by the delivery of automated systems of engagement and the underlying systems of intelligence. And we've provided a couple of examples around that. In relation to, to cloud uh, databases and IT processes, you know, we, we see that increasingly hybrid is no longer an option. It, it is an inevitability. And so you know, what we say to you know, our enterprise clients and, and customers that we speak to is they need to be taking steps now. I, mean, I think a lot of companies are aware of this but are not necessarily moving as quickly as they could in terms of actually addressing some of these challenges. So they need to take steps now to at the very least explore their opportunities for things like advanced analytics to extend the value of existing resources and data. If you've attended uh, other sort of webinars involving uh, 451 research analysts, you may have heard this phrase before. We, we tend to use it quite a lot. But we see that in the future, those that own the data will win, and, and those that don't will have to pay for access to it. And what that means is you know, for, for enterprises, they need to start now to consider and prepare for the longer-term business opportunities and the use cases that will be enabled by some of the technologies and, and approaches that we've been talking about, including the Internet of Things, machine learning, hybrid databases, and, and databases in the cloud. And with that, um, I'll just uh, hand this over to John. Great. Thanks very much. Actian has a full portfolio of data management, integration, and analytics solutions to address the challenges of hybrid data and deliver the insights businesses are looking for. Please visit our website at actian.com to learn more. Thanks for your time today. Bye, everyone.